So I don't have to do this, but I'm going to watch you do it because I've never done it. So we are, what we're going to do is we're going to take off the, sh uh, the outside shell. Okay. It'll look like this. I don't know if you can see that. Yeah, all the way down you're going? Yep. Okay. So if you're, not, if you're worried about Loon, get out of here. If you're worried about, uh, if you're not worried about presentation, then you can take the tail off if you just want to eat. Okay. If you want to make it look nice, then we leave the tail on. Okay. Right here? Yep. Okay. So it's up to you. If you, you know, like I said, if you're just home and it's just you and Frank and you just want to eat and you're not worried about presentation, then you just take it right off like this. You take it and you just okay. pull it. And it'll come, hold the end, it'll come right off. I'm just gonna peel six of them after I kill my dog. <laughs> Sorry about that. Oh, you're good. All right. So you can buy shrimp, like I guess Frank did. Cleaned and deveined saves you some time, costs a little bit more money. Yep. Um, my wife wanted to kill me one time because we did a party of 100, and I bought this shrimp instead of the cleaned and deveined. Now, oh, no. So we, um, we costed it out, and it, it's seriously, nowadays, just pennies different. So you, what you're saving in uh, cleaning the money of, of buying shrimp with everything on it, you're wasting on labor. Right. My, wa my, my wife wanted to kill me. Uh -huh. Right. So I've just peeled six of them. <clears throat> I'm sorry. I'm stepping out of the. Oh, you're fine. It's not my problem. That's Franco's. <laughs> All right. So I take a paring knife. Okay. I don't know if you can still see. Yeah. And I cut all the way down the back. Okay. And then you find this vein here. Mm -hmm. And that comes out. And that's the only one we take out. Okay. If you cut both sides, then, then you, the shrimp is going to fall apart on you. Gotcha. So let me just clean these. You know what the funny part is? What people the think of shrimp like baby lobsters, you know, the texture is about the same. Yeah. And when you clean them, some people it's called tamale and a lobster, and they actually pay for it to eat. Yeah. The, I know. It's like the poop, right? <laughs> yep. <laughs> but on a on a lobster, the tamale is like the guts. And what they do is they take it out and they saute it up and they put it back in and people eat it. I don't know why. That's like the green part of the lobster, right? Yes. So this is actually, like you said, the poop vein. But when you eat baby shrimp, tiny shrimp, like the really small ones, they never take this out because it, it's just too small to see. Gotcha. All right. So now. Okay. Again, if you want to be fancy, you would take the shrimp and you would cut the top end you, like this. Okay. Yeah. yeah. If, you're not, if you're not going to be fancy, you take the end off, you leave the shrimp like this. Okay. This is going to cook a lot quicker than this. Not that, you know, this, you'll see it'll, when it cooks, it'll actually stand up. So I'm going to show you this way and this way in my dish so I can show you the difference. Okay. All right, so we got the shrimp cleaned. Let me get this out of my way. So wash my hands. Because I can't stand the smell of shrimp. By the way, Frank is the one who sends you those guys like, oh, I'm going to take a picture of us eating and send it to my wife. Yes. Well, he likes to rub it in. <laughs> like I'm gonna go eat with Carmine today. Like ah, oh, that's nice. I'm having hummus on a pita bread for lunch. So we have tomatoes. Yep. Which ones? Which kind are you using? I have the whole. The whole. Yep. Yep. So 
Uh, you have the small can like this? Yeah. Yeah, okay. So let's open that can up. Okay. You're gonna be you're gonna be shocked how quick this is. You're gonna be like, what? <laughs> okay. So oh, do you have your garlic? I do. Okay, let's make sure we have everything. So we have our tomatoes. Yep. Is your garlic is your garlic uh, chopped up or is it whole? It's whole. Okay, so you're gonna take, you only need like two or three cloves. Okay. Does Frank like big pieces of garlic or does he like chopped up garlic? He likes big pieces. Okay, so perfect. Once you've got the, once you got the three cloves peeled, okay. you know that, you know that hard end? Yeah. You're gonna cut that off. Sorry, I'm just getting a few things together. Oh, you're good. Are you almost done with that? Yep, I'm done. Okay. I just had to grab some of my chicken stock that I made. Oh, you use homemade chicken stock? Yeah. <laughs> that's another video. Wow. That's a whole the lesson. That's that's one that I would actually really appreciate because I use the store oh, Frank was like, not he wanted, he's like let, Frank was like, look, I want to teach her something she can make me to eat. <laughs> okay. Yeah, that's not chicken stock. No. No. All right. The reason I make now what we do, like some people don't have chicken stock, so you can buy it in a store. Um, mm -hmm. There's a lots of different ones out there. So <clears throat> you can buy it in a store if you don't have it yourself, or you can use water. The reason we use chicken stock is for more flavor. Okay. We're gonna need a liquid. Might as well use a liquid that has more flavor than water. You know right. what I'm saying? Yeah. All 
Okay. So, I mean, you can actually still see in my chicken stock, I still have oh, the yeah. carrot. It's got the carrots, the celery, the onions. I can really quickly teach you how to make this. What you're going to do, mm -hmm. <clears throat> you're going to go and you're going to grab um, chicken legs from the supermarket. Yeah. Just the legs, drumsticks. Okay. Yeah. You're going to put that in a pot and you're going to cover it with water. Then you're going to get what we call the mirepoix, mm -hmm. carrots, onions, and celery. Okay. So the, the onion is half the amount of the celery and the carrots together. Okay. So it's two parts onion, one part carrot, one part celery. So let's say you had two ounces of, of onion, you'd have to have one and one of the other one. Okay. You get, okay. Yeah. So, yeah. but, but Italians, we don't do it like this. Okay. <laughs> what we, what we so do is that is, like the proper CIA way. Yes. Okay. So what we do is we, so you can see me, yep. we, I go through my refrigerator, mm -hmm. I find the end of the, the end of the celery, yep. the old onion that it's going to go bad if I don't use it, the baby carrots that everyone just took out, you know, and I, yep. I usually make my stock cleaning out my refrigerator. Ah, okay. So you get a pot, you mm -hmm. put the, the chicken legs in there, you cover it with water, you more than cover it with water, you, you're probably going to go like an inch away from the top. Okay. You put the onions, the carrots, the celery in there, and you let it cook forever. Okay. <laughs> this, uh, they say after, they say after, did my head pop off the side? Oh, there it is. Oh, you're good. You're good. <laughs> they say after three hours, four hours, you can't get any more flavor from chicken bones. Okay. So that's why they say stock takes four hours. So if you put it on low and you let it go, It'll smell the house up like you wouldn't believe. It's so nice. Okay. My kids in the winter time, they're like, "Can you make a pot of soup? You want soup? No, I just want to smell it." <laughs> so you make that. Now from that, um, you know what pastina is? Yeah. Okay. From that, you strain it out, and okay. then you can make. Then you take pastina, and you add a little salt, a little pepper, and then you have pastina. You boil it inside the stock. Oh, okay. and, that, and that's and what you can do is you can take the carrots and you can slice them up mm -hmm. and put them in the soup and you can take the the chicken legs and debone the chicken take all the meat when it's cold off and add the meat back into the soup okay so the easy way so we're using stock to make soup as well right right so the, and i always eat the carrot so do you freeze it once you've made it uh we go through it too fast okay we're, we're basically make this, we make this twice a week. Really? We go, we go through my kids. I have two 20 year olds okay. and I have a 16 year old and they eat all day long. Okay. So when there's nothing to eat, <clears throat> we taught them how to make pastina. Mm -hmm. So they'll, you know, if they're home for, cause they're in their home for schooling. They're learning schooling at home. Yeah. yeah. So my daughter can come down. We usually have a big stock pot. She strains it like I did into a small pot, brings it to a boil, adds the pastina, cuts up the carrots, maybe adds a little chicken, grated cheese, little parsley. She's done. And she thinks she's a chef. Ah, but you made the stock. Yes. Yeah. So I'm going to use stock instead of water to make our sauce more flavorful. Okay. Now, but we're making seafood. Chicken stock will take the flavor of whatever you put in it. Okay. Meaning if we cooked veal, mm -hmm. it'll taste like veal. It won't taste like chicken. Right. If we cook shrimp or seafood, it'll take the flavor of that. Can we make seafood stock? Yes, we can. Okay. But then you're limited to using that just for seafood. Okay. That's why I just go with the chicken stock. If I was doing a catering event, it would be different. Right. And if you want to do, I mean, it really depends on how much you want to show off because I can teach you how to make a fish stock out of uh, shrimp shells, the things that I just pulled off. Yeah. And I would take them and I would save them in a bag, in a freezer okay. bag. And I would put them in. And when I had a, like a one gallon freezer bag full of shrimp shells, mm -hmm. I would make a shrimp stock. Okay. I would take a big pot. I would put the shells in there, a little olive oil. When the shells turn red, I would add my carrots, my onions, my celery, my liquid, 
and I would let that cook again for three to four hours. Okay. And it smells fantastic, but now I'm limited. Right. My and kids you have to do it with shrimp, really. My kids don't eat. Like I would do is like you said, I would portion it out mm-hmm. and freeze it. And right. if I was making seafood, I would go get it and put it in the seafood. Okay. Um, my shrimp stock is insane. So my God. If, it, if go I ahead. wanted to do this on like a, a Friday in Lent and I didn't want to use chicken stock, could I use vegetable stock? Absolutely. Okay. You can make a vegetable stock the exact same way I said. Mm-hmm. Okay. Put everything in a pot, put the carrots, onion, celery in a pot, uh, garlic, you know what, what sweating is Yeah. when they set the sweat, sweat, the vegetables. Yeah. Until they're translucent. Soft. Yes. Yeah. Well, a little soft. Um, you'll throw the carrots, onion, celery, and the garlic in one time. Cause you're not looking to brown the garlic. Right. You right. want the flavor from the garlic, but we don't want to brown it. Okay. And then once it starts to sweat, cover the, you know, fill your pot up with the water, turn it on low and let it go. You can let that cook. You, the, the more it reduces, the more fortified it's going to be. Okay. So it's going to be more potent. So you need to use less. Okay. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I would, throw, I would throw tomatoes in it. Like, let's say you have some soft tomatoes that you, mm-hmm. you're not going to use for a salad, or I would cut them up, throw them in there as well. Okay. I yeah. would clean out your vegetable drawer in your stock. I like that. Okay. <laughs> so. We have our garlic that's sliced, right? You just told me to take off the end, but I can slice it. Yep, and now you're going to slice it. Okay. Okay. You have, did he get the cooking wine? I have wine that I like to drink. That's fine. Yep. Um, when you're cooking at home, a little for the sauce, a little for you, a little for yep. the sauce. <laughs> I like cooking with Pinot Grigio. You can cook with Pinot Grigio. You can cook with Chardonnay. The reason you don't do that in a restaurant is it's too expensive. Right. You, you, you would can't cook use with the wine for the table. No, you would use uh, what we call cooking wine, cooking white wine, something you wouldn't drink by the glass. Okay. But at home, if you have a bottle that's sitting in the refrigerator, that is that been open for a couple of days and you don't want to drink it anymore? I would cook with it. Why throw it away? Okay. Makes sense. Do you guys drink a lot of Pinot Grigio? Do you drink a lot of? I like Pinot Grigio. I'm actually going to use Sauvignon Blanc today. I have a nice, okay. not too sour Sauvignon okay. Um right. that I'm really partial to. A little buttery taste at the end? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Now, I don't know if Frank told you or if we saw any of my videos. I love butter. Yes. I I, listen, I want to start my own club, 500 and happy. I tell my <laughs> wife to leave me alone all the time. I'm like, I want to be 500 pounds. Just leave me alone. <laughs> She's like, no. So I'm going to tip this down so you can see my saute pan. Awesome. Can you see my saute pan? Okay. So, by the way, Frank wants one of these burners. I was thinking that I do because that would make this much easier. <laughs> We're in our little so, galley kitchen. He, he wants a camping burner. I don't know why. Is he is he like to camp or <laughs> maybe he wants a camp like in the back? I've got to be careful what I say because he's going to be editing this and he's going to hear all of it. You know, I forgot to ask you. Did you ever? Do you have a pot of water up? I do. It's, it's, okay. I haven't Perfect. set it to boil yet, though. That's that's fine. Okay. I'm actually adding more water to my pot. I'm actually going to move you over. Should I set it to boil? Uh, is it is it hot? No. Okay. Yep. Set it to boil. Can you see my stove top? I can. Okay. I'm going to actually move over because we left the boys and I left my butane connected to the, to the uh, burner and oh. left it on. Oh. So we finished it. So I finished it. So I'm going to cook on my stove. And since you're like family, you don't mind. No, I don't mind at all. <laughs> I'm cooking on my stove. Okay. 
So you is the garlic nice and sliced? Yep. Okay. You have your olive oil? I do. Okay. So you're going to put about, I'm going to say three tablespoons of olive oil in the pan. Okay. Now, when I'm sauteing, I would say I want you to wait until the olive oil dances. Mm -hmm. But if we did that, we would burn the garlic. Right. So we're going to add the garlic now. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> Now we are looking for color in the garlic. Okay. okay. Now, regardless of what the, some of the people said on my site, <laughs> brown isn't burnt. No. Garlic goes from white to brown to like golden brown, like light brown, golden brown, then burnt. Light brown and golden brown garlic is sweet. Yes. Black garlic is bitter. Okay. Yeah, I've had black garlic. It does not taste good. Okay. I used to yell at my chefs all the time. Pan's too hot. Pan's too hot. They put the oil in, they threw it, and I'm like, you burnt it. Start again. So what temperature do you have your pan on right now? I have my I have mine on high right now just to get it because it was cold. Okay. Now that I see it start to, it's starting to change color, I'm going to go to medium high. So like eight, seven. Okay. Okay. Now, do you see how it's starting to get nice color? Yeah. Okay. So that's what we're looking for. And you can smell it. It's aromatic. Yep. You smell the garlic. It, it actually starts to smell sweet. Yes. I love the smell of garlic. All right. So once we have a nice color, now, we don't want any of it to start turning uh, dark brown because then it'll become bitter. We're going to add our tomato to it. You don't want to do that. I did that on purpose. Lower your feet, lower your feet before you add your tomatoes. I did that because I wanted you to see what would happen if you tried to add it with the pan so hot, uh, with the flame still high. And what happens is the oil gets, you're adding the tomatoes and it starts to bubble and the heat from the sides of the pan catches the oil on fire. And then you get what I just did. So did and you, you pull it off the heat or? I did, yep, I pulled it away, but you can pull it away, but just lower the heat all the way down and add your tomatoes in because you want to be hands free. Yep. You don't want to be doing one hand holding it because if you have an if you have an issue, you can't deal with it. You know what I'm saying? Now the tomatoes are in there. You can raise the temperature back up to six seven. Okay. Now, what you're gonna do is we're gonna season this now. Yep. You have black pepper. I do. So you're gonna you're gonna put a pinch of black pepper. Now remember, we're cooking seafood, mm -hmm. so we're not gonna go too heavy with the salt. So we're gonna go one pinch of salt. Okay. Remember, it's at your table. You can always add it again. Were your tomatoes salted or no? No. Okay. Were, were yours? No. Okay. So. You have a little, uh, you have parsley? I have dried parsley, dried parsley? I have parsley paste. You have, do you have dried parsley? Yeah. Okay. Take the dry parsley. You're going to put a pinch of dry parsley in there. And if you have oregano, you're going to put a pinch of oregano. Okay. And now we're going to let that simmer. So you're going to lower it to four, maybe even, I see, I don't know how strong your oven is. Is it? It's pretty powerful. It's a gas burner. Okay. Then go down to, th you want it to simmer, but not boiled. You know what I mean? Yeah. Okay. So you want it to see, you want to see bubbling, but not boiling. 
It's bubbling like around the edges. Yes. Yeah. Okay. But small, small bubbles, right? Yeah, it's not... not big bubbles. Okay. So now we're going to let that cook for a little bit. Okay. I like to, if you have a cover, that would be great. I like to cover it. How's your water in the back? It's simmering, almost boiling. Okay. So, you know, you know, you got to salt your, your uh, pasta water, right? Yeah, I did two good hand pitches. Okay. So the trick is that our culinary chefs told us is that the water needs to smell like the ocean. Okay. All right. Because... Yes, we're cooking fish, but if we don't, and we put a little salt here, but if we don't salt our pasta, the pasta tastes bland. Right. You know what I mean? Okay. So this is going to take, this is going to take about five minutes okay. to get to where we want it. Okay. Now we have our shrimp ready. Yep. The sauce is almost ready. It's not there yet. And we have our pasta water coming up. Here's another thing. Because you're cooking at home. And you, if you, let's say you don't have stock and you don't have vegetable stock, and you don't want to, you can use your pasta water. Oh, okay. Okay. So you can take a ladle of your pot and a lot of chefs do that. Mm -hmm. They take ladles of their pasta water and use it to, to thin out their sauces. Okay. All right. Does, does Frank like pieces of tomato in his? Yeah. In his like okay. Chunky. He likes it chunky. Yep. Okay, like a marinara. Yeah. So what you can do is you can take your fork or a fork and you can crush the tomatoes down. Now be careful. Yeah. Okay. Now I like I like San Marcano style tomatoes. Okay. I, they're the best tomatoes in the world come from San Marcano, Italy. And the people that that live there get offended when people say, oh, I use San Marcano tomatoes when it's San Marcano style. All okay. that means they're packing it the same way that the Italians do, but it's not really the same tomato. Okay. Okay. Now, let's say. How, how can you tell the difference? You want to know the trick? Yeah. And I just learned this the other day. If you get San Marcano tomatoes, the, how you know you have real ones, when you open the can, if inside the can is white. Okay. Then they're real San Marcano tomatoes. But if your can is stainless steel on the center, mm -hmm. then it's not. Okay. Rats, not mine. <laughs> it's okay. The ones I have aren't either. <laughs> Now, if you don't want to do that with a fork because you think you get your hand, you have a, you have one of these? I do. You can use that as well. Yep, you can go like that as well. See? It's breaking down. You have your tasting spoon? I do. Go ahead and taste it. Remember, it's really hot, so be careful. Yeah. What do you think? It needs a little salt. And go ahead and add a little bit more salt. Remember. It's yours. Yep. You can That's add as much I salt. I like a lot of salt. You can add as much salt as you like. You can add as much seasoning. It's yours. You don't have to do it the exact. You're going to make it your dish. Right. All right. So then. 
You got all those tomatoes crushed? Yes, that was the last one. Okay. Now you're going to let that simmer nicely. You can move that to the side on a, the back burner. And you can put that on really, really low. Okay, sorry about the noise. Oh, you're fine. I'm grabbing my other saute pan. Okay, so that, now you have a, there you have a sauce I like to call filete de pomodoro a la minute. You can make a quick tomato sauce. It doesn't have to boil for hours. It's a, like a marinara. You can make a, you can have your pasta boiling, toss it together. There's your lunch. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So now we're going to take that and make it into shrimp marinara. Okay. I'm just getting my panel. You have another saute pan? I do. Okay. You want to grab that? Yeah. I'm going to put it on. We're going to put it on the stove and on medium heat and warm. Okay. If you find that your sauce is getting too thick. You still have the can that you got it from? I can grab a water glass. Yeah, you could rinse out the can and use that as well to thin it out a little bit. Okay. okay? So Italians don't like to waste anything. Nope. Not when it comes to food. Okay. <laughs> Do you have any more garlic? I know I'm going out of order, but I'm-, I'm I just, always have more garlic. Okay, this is a, a test. How do they what they call it? Test in theory. I'm I'm learning. You're learning how to make a dish, and I'm learning how to be able to teach you how to make a dish. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. So, how many more so cloves? Just two more. Okay. And this one, you can. Do you have a garlic smasher, or you don't? I don't. Okay. What you're going to do. I can chop garlic. Okay. You can take your knife and you can go on the side of your knife. You, after you peel the garlic, you can take, you know how to smash it with your knife. Yeah. Right. Okay. And then give it a little chop. It can be rustic. It doesn't have to be, it doesn't have to be totally minced. I'm not going to get marks for my knife cuts. No. Uh, as long as I don't get marked for my prepper, uh, my mise en place not being 100%. <laughs> well, I have to tell you, this is more organized cooking than I usually do. Usually I'm running around like a chicken without its head. And so, I have a couple of cookbooks with some French recipes that I want to try. But see, I'm and, terrified of the mise en place. But see, that's what I mean. Like, this is... I like the back and forth with people. I like explaining things. I like showing you, like, like if I read a book about how to fix a car, I would be terrified because I wouldn't understand it. Right. But if you told me, hey, Carmine, I have a recipe and I would, I want to know, can you help me go through it? That's different. You know what I mean? That's why yeah. I want to do stuff like where I sit down with the potential person that wants to learn how to co a cooking lesson and be like, what do you want to make? Right, right. And then I can tell them ahead of time, hey, this is the ingredients you need. These are the, this is the, uh, the equipment that you need. Tell me what you have, what you don't have. I can teach you how to use other things. Like not everyone has an emulsion blender. Right. You know, but some people have the old fashioned um, pasta mill, the food mill, the old fashioned like a, one. Like a potato racer? Yes. But back in the day, we never called and the Italian people never called it a potato rice. They called it the, the pasta, the tomato sauce smasher or what? Ah, okay. To make the sauce thin, you know what I mean? So they would put the, the tomato sauce through the, to, through the ricing or the food mill is what the real name is. Okay. And that's how they would make their sauce nice. And, and because kids didn't like chunks of garlic and tomatoes, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. 
right. Let me know when your garlic's ready. It's chopped dish. Okay. So before we get started, I'm going to tell you what we're going to do right. because it's okay. going, to, it's going to move quickly. Okay. 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 So we're going to take our pan and we're going to add about a tablespoon of oil, tablespoon of whole butter, and our okay. garlic. Okay. That's going to start to brown. Then we're going to add a little more salt, a little pepper. A l- Next time we'll have the parsley ready chopped, fresh yeah. parsley, right? Once that browns, we're going to add white wine, about four ounces and about, uh, so did he get you chicken broth? I have chicken stock. That's fine. And we're going to add the same amount of, so we're going to let the, we're going to deglaze the pan with the wine. We're going to let it reduce. And then we're going to add the chicken stock to it. And then we're going to let that cook down. Then with a ladle, we're going to put our sauce in the pan. Okay. That's going to get all nice, all nice and nice. And then we're going to place our shrimp in there. But before we do that, what kind of pasta you're using? So I know the timing. Linguini. Okay. So uh, the Checo. Borello. Yeah. Okay. I think Borello is nine minutes or 10, right? This is six. Is it the Borello? Is it Linguini Fini? Yeah. Okay. I can use regular. That's 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 perfect. Six minutes work. As soon as your, is it your pasta water boiling? Yeah. Good. All right. I have spaghetti. See, back at the restaurant, back in the restaurant, I could tell you that spaghetti cooked in nine minutes, Linguini cooks in 12, Penny Regatti cooked in uh, 13 minutes. That's because we did it every single day. Right, right. Okay. So is this meal just for you or are you going to save some for Frankie boy? I'm going to save some for Franco. Maybe, if he's good. Yeah. All right. I missed a step because I'm not going to use the uh, pepper flakes because my wife doesn't like spice. Okay. So what you're going to do is once you put the garlic and the butter, the olive oil, the salt, pepper, when you add those ingredients, you're going to add your crushed red pepper to it. Okay. Before we add the wine. Okay. So I'm going to recap. Ready? Yep. Olive oil, olive oil, butter, garlic, garlic starting to brown, salt, pepper, crushed red pepper flakes. Yep. Give it a second. White wine, wine, chicken stock. White wine's going to reduce by, uh, let's say, by half. Okay. And then we're going to add the chicken stock. And we're going to ladle in our sauce. Yeah. Mix it around. And then what we're going to do is add our shrimp in there. Okay. Okay. And that's how, and then we let that go. But before we do that, I want you to drop your pasta. All right. But I want you to be ready to do everything else. Okay, we're set? Yes. Okay, so let's drop our pasta. Now, Frank and I made it, we were, we were joking around. He's like, oh, a pound of pasta. For an Italian, one pound, one person. For, for American people, I know. one pound of pasta, four people. I never make enough pasta for him. Like eight servings in the box? All right, I'll make a quarter of a box. No, that's that's not for Italians. No, I know. For skinny Italians, for northern Italians, it's four servings to if you were doing a, a dinner party at your house, you would say four servings per pound. Okay. For Frank and me, you would say one, two boxes per Frank and Carmine. <laughs> I'm not kidding. I eat a, I can eat a lot of pasta. My wife, then she came home the other night and she saw me on the couch. She's like, what are you, food drunk? I was like, no, I'm not food drunk. I'm tired. Yeah, you guys are food drunk. Those guys are complaining that they had to drive home. (laughs) I was like, I don't think anybody cares. The other rule is a pound of pasta, a gallon of water. Okay. But Italians, we don't listen. We don't do that. What we do is if you, I don't know if you can see my hand. Yeah. We hold the pasta and as it boils, we add it, you know, we move it in. 
How do you know if the mm -hmm. pasta is cooked all the way? You taste it. Okay. Italian chefs say, how do you know if the pasta is cooked enough for Americans? They say you take the pasta, you throw it against the wall. If it sticks there and doesn't slide off, it's cooked for an American. Yes. Because it's My sticky. mother used to do that. You know I'm not Italian, right? I'm sorry. No, I'm... But you're I'm Italian because you're, Italian you're married Frank. I'm Italian by marriage. There you go. What? All right. So that... We're going to let that cook. Okay. Okay. And now we're going to go on to our sauce. Yep. Okay. So we're going to give give your pan a little heat. Yep. Let it get a little tempered heat to it. Now we're going to add our olive oil. Yep. About two tablespoons. And a tablespoon of butter. And I'm, I'm adding my garlic. I'm on, I, made, I messed up. Okay, and we start over. What happened? It burned? Yeah, I had to. Hold on. Okay, I oh, see I what's happening. That. Yep. <laughs> it's okay. The pan was too hot. Can you get to it? Shut it off? I can't hear you. <laughs> Can you shut it off? I can't hear you. <laughs> okay, shut it off. Oh, off. Okay. So I think what happened was. I'm listening. You told me to turn on my burner. Oh, and we were, and we, 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 I was talking as usual. And then uh, I added the oil, which was fine. But then the milk proteins and the butter burnt on top. What happened is it's, it, it went quickly and it got too hot and it started yep. to smoke, right? Yep. Okay, and then when you add you added your garlic, or you never added the garlic. I didn't get there, so the good news that's, is that I have to chop garlic even, again. That's that's even better. Yep. Hey, it happens. The only thing is now I'm using a nonstick because whatever. You're using what? A nonstick pan because that was that, my last that's, thing. That's, that's fine. That's, it'll work. Oh, I'll give him kisses. You can tell I, I like my dog. I drove all the way to Ohio to get her. Oh, wow. 15 hour round trip. My wife thought I was crazy. <laughs> All right. Did you add your garlic? I did. Okay. And I did. Now remember, I don't want I don't want too much color on your garlic. Okay. So now you're gonna add your salt, your pepper, and you're gonna add your crushed red pepper, right? Yep. Is the garlic starting to brown? A little bit. Okay. You have your wine nearby. I do. Now we don't want to flame over because the alcohol. In the, so you, once your garlic is getting to where you want it, shut off your burner or pull away like you said before and add your four ounces. Approximately, you know what I mean? Yeah. And then turn your flame, turn it back on and let it reduce by half. Now, you're going to say, how do I know when it's half? When it starts to look like half the, side, half the volume, doesn't have to be exact, but we're cooking off the alcohol because we want the flavor of the wine, but not the acidity. 
That makes sense? Yep. How's it coming? It's coming. It's not half yet. Okay. You can, if you're brave, you can turn the heat up a little bit. As long as you have everything. almost burnt the house down. Listen, I, my, son already, my son already burnt my house down once. So I'm one step ahead of you because I had to add my stock because my my so uh, my uh, wine was already cooking down so far. But don't feel rushed. I'm here. This is your time, so we go as fast or as slow as you need us to. Mm -hmm. How's it looking? It's still looking watery. Okay. Turn your. How high is your flame? Medium. Go go even higher. Is it is it like this? See how mine is boiling. Yeah. You can even go. Mine is as high as I can get it. How's your sauce on the back? Dude? Let's not forget about that. It's simmering. Okay. Is it starting to get a little dry? No. I can't wait to try this with somebody who has an electric oven. Uh, at that point, I'm going to want to kill myself. <laughs> so when I was a kid, we had an electric range until I was like 15. So I really learned how to cook. Then the, the problem is when you, got, when you got gas, you were like, whoa, this cooks way too fast. Yep. It's funny. I think my parents, I'm adding the stock. Okay. Remember about the same amount, four ounces? Yep. Okay. There you go. My parents, are you, I think they broke you, their range. Am we, I, what? Um, I was going to say, now that you add your stock in, you can turn your heat as high as it can go because you you definitely burned off all the alcohol. It shouldn't flame up on you. Okay. Now I have like a rolling boil going. Yep. Almost dropped my phone into my sauce. <laughs> okay. Do you have a slotted or? I do. A slotted spoon? Okay. Now, the reason I want to use a slotted spoon is because I want to get more of the chunks of tomatoes in there than the, all that juice. How much am I using? How much? You're going to put in about three or as much as you like. If you like it really saucy, then you add more. If you like it less saucy, you add less. Okay. I'm actually going to go with four just because I'm looking at it and I want it to come together a little bit more. Now, if you were going to, if you were going to um, use shellfish like mussels and clams, mm -hmm. we would have kept our sauce much looser. Okay. Added the shellfish in and let it cook till they open. Okay. Because we need we need this we need to steam them open. And remember, when clams open, they're going to release their juices and your right, sauce. Right. Okay. How's it looking? It's looking good. Okay. 
Is it aromatic? Can you smell the crushed red pepper? Can you smell the garlic? Yeah. Okay. Now, just so we can get the shrimp in there without burning ourselves, I'm going to lower my heat. Okay. I'm going to play. Now, the reason I don't just drop the shrimp in, mm -hmm. because I don't want it to bunch up together and then it will, it will cook uneven. I want it, to, I spread it around so it cooks evenly. Okay. And I left that one right here so I can show you what I mean about it. It'll come up on its own. I turned it all the way down and I lowered it. And then I covered it, I mean, I'm sorry. Now, how's your pasta? Let me look. Should still be al dente. Mm. Can you get a piece out? There you go. It looks. Take it and taste it. That's the only way. Is it hard? No. Okay. It's done. Shut it off. Am I straining it yet or no? Did you cover your shrimp? Okay. Like Take the shrimp and go go halfway on the temperature. Okay. Because your your pasta is gonna is ready. So now you're gonna strain it. Okay. How's your shrimp look? Pink. Are they all the way pink? Um, maybe a little translucent in the middle. Okay. So let it go for a little bit longer. Okay. You strain your pasta? Yep. Now, before your shrimp is cooked all the way, you're gonna take as much pasta as you wanna eat right now and put it in the middle like that. And then you're gonna just move it around. If you have a pair of tongs or if you have a pasta fork or something, you're gonna move it around. Now this is where you gotta start deciding to yourself, is it too thin, is it too thick? If it's too thin, we can add a little more sauce to it, a little of the pasta water. See, when I drained my pasta water, my pasta, I before it was done draining, I put it back in my pan just so I can capture some of the liquid. Okay. So, so I could take the liquid if I had to and add it to my sauce. This is when you start to decide, hey, Next time I want to chop up my tomatoes a little bit more. Yeah. Or you gotta you you gotta learn from every time you make it. So next time when you make it, you're like, hey, last time 
the tomatoes were too chunky. Or last time I crushed the tomatoes too much and I want it to be, you know, more like a marinara. We're moving it around. Do you have a pair of tongs? I do. Okay. Well, your pasta was already cooked. So what you can do now is you can take, what I do is I take the pasta out and I leave the shrimp in when I'm plating. So I can, they always say you should always put the most expensive stuff on top. Again, in a restaurant, if you're at home, right. you do what you like. Let's say I'm taking all my pasta out, put it in the bowl. Nicey, nice. Like Joe's grandmother would say. And then my shrimp are cooked, so I'm going to put my shrimp around the outside. Just want to show you something. Ah. See, it popped up. And when we were in the restaurant, I would tell my guys when I would train them when this when they because we would lay them down a certain way so that when they pop up, I would be there done. Don't keep okay. cooking. That's why I do it that way. All right? Okay. Now that all the pasta's out and the shrimp's out, right? I take my sauce. I move it around the pan a little bit. I figure out if I need to loosen it up or, or if it's good. And then I place it in the center. Okay. And it should look... Now, if you had fresh chopped parsley or if you have basil, it's up to you. My wife loves basil, so she would want me to garnish it with fresh basil. No, Luna, it's not for you, it's for me. Wow, wow. How's it coming? I didn't put enough pasta in the first bowl. Or I That's didn't fine. put enough pasta in the first time. So I have to add a little more frangible pasta. But, but see, next time, you're going to know that you're going to need to add more pasta. Yep. Right? And say, I'm adding the rest of my pasta to the tomato sauce because I know my son's coming home soon. He's not, he doesn't want the shrimp. He just wants the pasta. Gotcha. So are you a big seafood person, chicken person, vegetable person? So I like seafood and I like chicken and then I like an occasional steak. Okay. So, so the next the next time you and I, you pick something that you want to learn, not okay. that Frank. <laughs> so if you yeah. want like you like eggplant, I can show you how to do beautiful eggplant dish. I do not like eggplant. Do you like risotto? I like what? Risotto? I've never made it, but I want to. So that would be the perfect thing. So because you helped me out tonight, I owe you another cooking lesson where it's all going to be about you and not Frank. Sounds good. And I know you're, tape you're recording this so Frank can hear me say that. He can. I know. I have to be so careful. <laughs> You've been baiting me too. 
Oh, I know you love your Pooh Bear. I do. But that doesn't mean I couldn't say something stupid. It's funny, like I'm getting text messages on top of my screen. <laughs> I'm like, yes, you can come home. Let's see how it looks. Show me. There it is. There it is. The shrimp are under there somewhere. Okay. 